Hello, everyone, and welcome to 25 Days of Christmas Around the World. We are on day 24, which is Christmas Eve, and it's a really special one today. This has marginally been about business throughout the month, and today it is strictly personal. I met Majid, my guest for today, who is from Syria. I met him down the street from my house um, and have just been so impressed by him and his story and his attitude. He is just a Hallmark movie in the making, but he's real. And I couldn't resist having him on the show as my almost finale. Majid, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you share you're welcome, my pleasure. I would love for you to share a little bit of your story with my viewers. Okay, so uh, my name is Majid. I am 20 years old. I, I'm, I live in Ohio. I've been living here for around a year. I was born in Syria and I lived there for like around 11, 12 years. And then uh, I had to move in 2012. I had to move to the US because a uh, war started in my country. So I moved there, I moved to the US for around two, three years, and then I had to move to Europe for three years because I was here in the US and my family was in Europe. It was so complicated. So I lived there for three years. I was planning on staying there forever, but because of uh, I couldn't, the education was not very good there. So I had to move back with my family in 2019, last year to uh, America because education here would be better. So I moved back here and uh, I got a job first and then I started doing something called GED, which is a high school diploma. That way I can get my GED and go to college because uh, I didn't get a chance to get a high school diploma back when I used to be in Europe. So uh, now I work at a gas station and uh, also going to school. I'm going to continue doing that for the next three, four years until I graduate from college. And after that, I would have, I would say, my dream job. <laughs> so as they always say, it will pay off. And it was a little bit hard for me first to learn the language, which is English. But uh, thank God, the American people helped me a lot because they're so friendly and I, I just based on my experience they helped me a lot to learn the uh, language so uh i would yeah. say so because your english is just perfect I, I as an english teacher there's nothing that i feel like i could teach Majin. otherwise he'd have free english lessons for sure <laughs> and the reason is because of the people I, i'm not gonna lie like i i used to when i grew up i used to like hate learning other languages but uh, especially American people, they just like let me love the language because the way that they taught me English and how they, they were so nice to me, you know, they were so friendly that on the inside, it just make me feel more comfortable speaking the language. So back when I used to back when I used to live in Europe, I had to learn German. So, I mean, it was a little bit hard because I didn't have a lot of friends, unlike here in the U.S., because in the United States, they're so friendly, I got to say. So that was a huge part of me learning the language. And I just, I can't, everything that when we talk about things that you've done, I just want to say how impressive it is. Most of us Americans, one of the reasons I think we're so friendly is we're so lucky. We live in a great place with um, mm -hmm. lots of comforts and the thought of a war-torn world is really something quite foreign to us. It's something that we read in the papers, something that we fear, but not something that we've lived through. And to know that you went through that at such a young age and then to move to a whole new new culture, learn a new language, and then yet again, get torn away to a new culture and a new language. And everything you have done in 20 years is amazing to me. And yet you keep a smile on your face. Every time I see you, you are so positive. And I just thought you really capture the spirit of my American Christmas, which is no matter how hard things get, and this has not been a fun year for many people all around yeah. the world, no matter how hard things get, we should all be as happy as you are and always look for that silver lining, never give up. And what you've done for yourself and for your family and at 20, I just, you're so amazing. Thank you again. You're welcome. That's why I always <laughs> say, I try it like when I see you, uh, 
an, an American young guy just like me, for example, I always tell them that you guys are, I would say, I'll consider you guys lucky to be born in the U.S. Like, it's a dream for me to become a U.S. citizen, but especially because if I'm like, because if I'm from the Middle East, a little bit hard for me to travel sometimes. I need a visa to literally everywhere. So <laughs> I tell people, you grew up in America, I consider you lucky because you guys have like, what do you guys consider essential used to hear like let's say electricity food and and all gas for example we don't have we we used to struggle to have those back when i used to live in syria so even the the, the thing that you guys consider essential we don't even have it back in the middle so i always tell people that you guys are so lucky to be born in a country like america or, or europe or wherever so that's why that's that's why it's a dream for me to be a citizen you know and what was your what's your native language what's your first language your native tongue it's uh, arabic arabic because uh in syria yeah in syria they speak arabic so they used to that's teach us English, extra so. hard you have different characters different sounds different structure of language it's it's a, a quite a feat to move from arabic to german to english it's in english really, yeah really impressive i was I grew up at, when I when I used to be a kid. I just didn't like learning languages. I gotta say so, <laughs> but I was be when I moved to different countries. I was I would say forced to learn the languages. So uh, now that I after I learned them and stuff, I know that that thing will pay off. You know that's definitely gonna help me with my future to get a uh, good job after I graduate or. You know that that's that's gonna help me. Like if you speak more languages, that's always that's always positive thing. That's why everybody tells me so. Oh yeah, absolutely. It'll be make you very valuable. So what is your end goal? What is your perfect job? Okay, so uh, right now because I've only been living here for a year. Back, I mean, when I used to live in uh, Europe, I was planning on uh, doing hospitality or like working at a hotel. But uh, after I moved to the United States. I changed my mind because it's way different here. My main goal, I would say first is to finish my GED because literally I would say it, a year ago, I was like high school was, was like a dream for me because uh, when, I, when I went to Europe, they said that it's not, I was, I think I, I was 17 years old then. And they said, well, you have to be 16 to be able to go to high school, you know, to be able to. And I was like, that's weird. <laughs> so it was like yeah. a dream for me to get a high school diploma. Now that I'm doing it, which is this is the main goal right now for me is to graduate, finish high school first. If I finish high school, I will definitely go to college. This is, this is the reason why I moved here to the U.S. So I still I'm still thinking about what am I going to do in college? I think that I'm pretty sure if I'm going to do like an internship just to see what I'm interested in. But uh, thank God everybody tells me that I'm still young. So I, I think I got time. But of course, I'm going to have to take advantage of that and also like not waste that time that I have. So I'm planning on as soon as I graduate from college, doing an internship and to make the final decision about what I'm going to go to college and then go from there. Well, I will be happy to help you with that when you're ready. With hundreds of contacts around the world, we'll find an internship no matter what you choose. So you just let me know. Mm -hmm. And I then will. the last thing I would ask is that the series has been about Christmas. And mm -hmm. um, out of curiosity, I, I, I'm guessing, or, um, did you celebrate Syri Christmas in Syria? And do you celebrate now? Uh, yeah, well, I grew up since I was born. I'm Christian. So I grew up Christian. We definitely celebrate Christmas. Now in Syria, not everybody celebrates it. Well, if, uh, only Christmas, only Christian people celebrate it, which is like me and my family. So uh, ever since I was born, I used to celebrate it every year. I used to put on my Christmas tree and, you know, all that Santa and all this stuff. I used to do it since I was a kid and I still do it till now. After I grew up, I still, I didn't put my Christmas tree yet, but yeah, I'm planning on doing it. <laughs> so uh, uh, I always, especially that around that time of year, since I was a kid, every time at Christmas day, I have to, like in the mornings, we used to go always to church. After that, you know, we the whole family gathers around. It's, it's not a lot different than America, but it's more of a, I would consider it here more of a, 
of our culture, I would say more of like going to church first and then the whole family would be around just like like Thanksgiving for example that's mm-hmm. how we do it but with Christmas you know, the whole family should be together and we're all like having fun and you know just like celebrating Christmas oh I love that I love that I love that and do you have any um foods or I feel like every time I have this show everybody gets really excited when they talk about their food so do you have <laughs> any like Syrian foods or dishes that you brought with you or are you more jazzed about the American style well, the thing is, I, I don't cook. I, I only, <laughs> <laughs> I so, well, I have, I'm so grateful. I have great parents. So, uh, well, my mom always cooks for us. You know, she's, well, she don't know how to cook American food. So she just goes with Arabic food. Uh, now in terms of me, I, I don't care. I, I eat literally American food, Syrian food. I just don't care because I grew up at two different cultures. So I just like, I just love both of them. I will tell my mom, like, she asked me, what do you want? What do you want for food tonight, uh, today? To, I was I'm like, I just don't care anything. I, I just don't care at this point. So yeah, that's why I was going to say, like, I'm so grateful for my parents. They made a lot of sacrifices to me. So uh, I consider myself lucky because I got great parents. Oh. Well, I hope that you have a wonderful holiday with those great parents. And thank you so again, much. Thank you for sharing with us a little bit about what it was like to come here from Syria and, and to be part of two cultures, even three cultures if you count Germany. And I think you're a great example of what I hope everybody can be is just to try out new things, new cultures, bring them all together, take the best of it, and just appreciate, appreciate the good things we have, appreciate our differences, and that's what I really like about the Christmas time, too. As you've already seen me, I'm already wearing my Christmas hats. We're only Mm -hmm. filming this early December, so it's okay he doesn't have Mm -hmm. this tree. Mine went up, one of mine went up, like, right after Thanksgiving, but there will be giant Santas and snowmen that you see throughout, because I'm just a very Christmassy person, (laughs) so... (laughs) But that's one of the reasons I like this time of year is it's all about looking forward and finding hope. And there's no one I thought better about finding hope than you after everything you've been through and you still keep that darling little smile on your face and looking forward, Mm -hmm. just trying so hard. I'm so proud of you. And I just want to thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Well, um, one thing I was going to ask, I almost forgot. Yeah. How would we say happy holidays or Merry Christmas in Arabic? Uh, okay, I haven't said it in a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but, uh, believe it or not, we all most of the time we say it in English, we say Merry Christmas, but uh, but in Arabic we say also it says like Milad Majid, which is like also Merry Christmas, but in Arabic. A lot of people do say it Merry Christmas, which I think is funny. Yeah. Like all the there, you're not the first culture I said, Oh, how do you say Merry Christmas? They said, Well, we say it in English. <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny. Well, Majid, I will see you again, I'm sure. But thank you so much. Definitely. Merry Christmas to you and your family. To you and your family as well. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And I hope to see you soon.